Hello. I'm Brittany. And I'm Brad. And we are Audio Show. Before we start, make sure to click that red subscribe button down below. Also hit that little bell so you can stay up to date whenever we release new episodes. Before we begin, we want to say thank you to HMH Teen for sending us this book that we are going to be reviewing today. <laughs> Every Moment After by Every Joseph. Every Moment After! I'm sorry! <laughs> Every Moment After by Joseph Moldover. Thank you, HMH. Yes, thank you so much. They sent us this book in exchange for an honest review, which we are really excited to give them. Very, very excited. We love HMH and what they produce. Mm -hmm. However, this book, we have some critic critical things about it. We have some thoughts. We have some thoughts. So before we really jump into it, uh, it's important to note that Joseph is actually a psychologist, and so his research with dealing with the topics that pop up in this book, which is a lot of grief, a lot of coping mechanisms, trauma, trauma, uh, tragedy, is well researched, well talked about, well discussed, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah, it's a different perspective that you don't often get mm -hmm. because of a lot of a lot of writers tend to write what they know and not what is true. Yes. And so I think with his clinical psychologist background, he knows a lot about the topics that are discussed, like yes. you said. Yeah. So it was really cool to read from his perspective and this book as a whole. Yes. So before we kind of get into the content, let's kind of go over the generalistic things about the book. Yes. So what kind of genre do we classify this as? This is a young adult, it is coming of age, and it is also a feelings and emotions kind of genre yeah. as well. It's I think it's contemporary mm -hmm. in a way of there's no mystery, there's no suspense, there's no yes. action, not even, I mean, it's mostly drama. Yeah, yeah. It is a lot of drama. So what this book is about is two friends are on the cusp of college and adulthood after uh, experiencing a deadly school shooting when they were in first grade uh, that left 18 of their fellow classmates dead. They try to navigate through their guilt over being alive because they are, there's three people that survived the school shooting mm -hmm. um, in their class. And they are attempting to move past the shadow that kind of haunts them from this shooting as they go into this new chapter of their life. So your main characters are Matt and Cole, and they are best friends. Mm -hmm. That was a good recap. I try. It's a heavy topic, and going into this, we weren't really sure how to go about it in order to think about yeah. it. We were hoping for some, you know, maybe even some lightness to the kind of storylines, the friendship that they have. Yeah. But even the friendship, it was so dark, and there was a lot of things that went into just them as being two young adult men yeah, and their lives that they've experienced as well on top of the school shooting. Yes. So it's just a very heavy topic and I went into it with hope. Yeah. But what I got was just, it was too realistic. Yeah. I went into this thinking it was a thriller. Girl. Oh yes. We did talk about that. We did. We did. Look. The the names and can I tell you can I tell them such, why such a we're dumb we, we, we're not dumb we're just dumb but we were like oh, okay okay the reason why she thought this was, was a thriller is because there are names on the cover crossed out. out no one does that if you're not on a hit list <laughs> yeah when we were trying to like figure out like little scenes to set up to take pictures of this book so that we could promote that we were going to be reading it. We were like, oh, let's make a list and cross out the names. And we were yeah. like, that would just be insensitive after we started really getting into the book. Yes. I was like, mm, let's leave those those names off that. So let's if you look on our <laughs> Yeah. If you look on our Instagram, you actually see a blank piece of paper because we were like, we're not putting anyone's names on there. No. Because that would be bad. So it it was difficult to go into this book after reading so many thrillers that we were reading up to this point. And then going into this book and it having a very real world perspective onto it. Nobody was getting kidnapped. Nobody was really like dying. It was a very like topical issue with mm -hmm. gun violence and school shootings. Mental health. Mental health. Three very important things that we should be discussing in today's uh, 
society. Society. Yeah. So it was very interesting to enter into this book after um, other books that we had read yeah. and it influencing kind of our idea of this book. Mm -hmm. I also kind of thought that it would be a little bit like um, This Is Where It Ends. Oh, yeah. Another school shooting um, novel that takes place when the school shooting yeah. is happening. Yeah, like during it. It was, so, it was so such a scary book. Yeah. So I kind of, not in like the thriller kind of way of like, oh, this is going to be, you know, a husband faking his death and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Not that kind of thriller, but just a thriller where we are in the action. We are seeing what is happening. We are feeling the emotions. Mm -hmm. We are experiencing everything that's happening to these characters. And the difference with that book and this book is this book does not do those things. This book is the aftermath yeah. of the school shooting. And you really do focus on Matt and Cole kind of living their lives where Cole has his father who passes away and he's mm -hmm. dealing with that. Yeah. Matt has diabetes. Yeah. And so he's dealing with his health concerns. So there's a lot more that has affected these two individuals' lives other than the school shooting, mm -hmm. but yet all they're remembered in the town, oh, you were the survivors. Yeah. Where one, I think, I believe it's Matt, Matt was not even in the school when the school shooting was happening. Yes. And so that's the big part, the kind of the overall arc of Matt's storyline is that he wasn't there. Yeah. But yet he was being remembered to be there. And so his whole story is trying to figure out if he is supposed to be alive, if what kept him home that day wouldn't have kept him home, would he have been killed by the shooter? Mm -hmm. And Cole's story is he was the face mm -hmm. of the shooting. He was the poster child. He was the kid that was carried out by the police officer with blood on his face. Yeah. And so he has this sort of face of the school shooting mm -hmm. and everywhere he goes, people remember him as that. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of him dealing with that and Matt dealing with, am I supposed to be alive? Am I really supposed to be here? Mm -hmm. And while as a reader, I'm sitting there fighting with these two and I'm like, Matt, you are supposed to be here. It wasn't your fault, but yet he's taking blame. Yeah. And that's where the guilt aspect comes in. And Cole, you know, I, I liked Cole overall better than Matt. Yeah. I, but there's just parts of him where I was like, is he using, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know how to describe why I liked Cole so much. I just preferred him over Matt because Matt was such a, like a, he victimized himself. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. So I think what I liked about Cole more so than Matt is that Cole's reason for continuing on and coping with it, the coping mechanisms mm. that he came up with were more sound than yeah. Matt's. Um, and that's not to say that people can't cope with things in different ways. Mm -hmm. People grieve in all sorts of different ways and there is absolutely no way to tell a person how they should grieve, what they should grieve, and it, in order like to move on how they should cope with things. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a person how they should be. But I will tell Matt that he should not be putting his life on the line Mm. to see if he is even supposed to be here in the first place. Exactly. You need therapy, yes. Matt. Cole needs therapy too. Cole needs therapy as well, but I feel like Cole was able, you know, you have those people that um, they, they desperately need, and even if they don't desperately need therapy, they will go to it and they will figure out the different things that work for them. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that don't go to therapy and they figure out their own personal coping mechanisms. True. Of how to deal with this mm -hmm. grief. But Matt's coping mechanisms were detrimental to everyone around him. Yes. Yes. Cole, on the other hand, he just made poor decisions. Yeah. I think Cole, he, and I, we're not going to tell you what he does in the book to yeah. make him look like he's making poor decisions. But let's just say his mind frame is not there yeah. when it comes to what is right and what is wrong. Yes. And I think that's where Cole comes into play with his story arc is like, do I just kind of surface life because this bad thing happened to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would, am I going to be, do I have, am I going to have any repercussions? Mm -hmm. So that was what kind of concerned me about Cole. 
Matt, I just really got mad at a lot. Yeah, I really kind of just didn't end up caring about Matt. Yeah. Um, Cole had the interesting juxtaposition between himself and his mother mm -hmm. dealing with these, uh, dealing with the death of his father and his mother's husband uh, from cancer. So long suffering disease, uh, he passes away. What was it like six months to a year or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was a recent death and he is projecting at the beginning what he thinks his mother is going through. And so he's saying that his mother is really hung up on the death and that she's grieving so harshly. She doesn't leave the house. She's sleeping all the time. She's a totally different person. She's not his mom anymore. And then when we come in with the start of the story, we see a totally different woman. But Cole is still reassuring us that, no, my mom is uh, sad and she's grieving mm -hmm. so harshly. And um, and w w in turn, he's dealing with the complex yeah. grief mm -hmm. that he kind of blames his mother for having. Yes. And so the mother is able to figure out her way of accepting the death and moving forward. Mm-hmm. But Cole is still, he's still hung up over the death and dealing with it. And, but he's thinking that his mother is dealing with it yeah. worse than he is. Mm -hmm. Another thing that uh, Joseph Moldover does really well is the minor characters that he includes in his story. Mm -hmm. So we have people like Paul, who's the twin of Andy, who was also Matt and Cole's best friend in first grade. Yeah. Who died in the shooting. Mm -hmm. Then we have Chris, who was also a survivor from the shooting. However, he is disabled. Yeah. And I love Chris. I love Chris so much. I think like, Chris was my favorite character. Chris is my favorite character too. Yeah. And even though he was doing some shady things, he was doing them because he had a, he has a whole life of being reminded that his ability to walk was taken yeah. away. And I think in the end, he was like, I gotta, you know, make a good decision here. Yeah. And I, so I loved Chris. I, I also had Eddie. I yeah. hated Eddie's character. Drug dealer Eddie. Drug dealer Eddie. And um, I just, I think that his character could have been flushed out a little bit more because they were so scared of him. But, but I was like- he wasn't me. I was like, why are you scared of this guy? And you just hear stories. I want to see the story. So I think if Moldover wanted to flush out Eddie's storyline, I think there could have been a couple of other chapters with Eddie coming up to them, threatening them, even stories kind of played out or yeah. described. It felt a little too surface. Yes. I know you had mentioned that before yeah. with like Cole just kind of like skirting the surface. But the story as a whole felt very, I don't want to say one dimensional, mm -hmm. but I, it just felt like it was at the, it was at the tip of what it was supposed to be. Yes. And it needed just one extra push yes. and it would have been there. Yes. I feel like if there was some suspense of, you know, we got the idea of, oh, they have to deal with Eddie. That the whole book is about, we got to deal with Eddie at the end. We got to deal with Eddie. However, there wasn't anything going on throughout the book to show me how scared you were, how intimidated, how 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 many feelings you were experiencing with that suspense, suspenseful situation yeah. that you could be involved in. Yeah. So like I really like what you said about it was at just like below the tip of where it could be yes. to be a, an excellent contemporary novel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep most of the time. I'll be honest. It was, I was, it was very easy to put down and just... Yeah. Forget about a little bit. Yeah. I was... I, I started this on my vacation and I fell asleep within the first couple of pages. I only read 38 pages on my vacation. And yes, it's hard to read on vacation sometimes when you're doing activities, but it was because it was not much going on in those 38 pages. And so in that first couple of chapters, you really got to hook me. Yeah. And this book, it took a while for me to feel anything for any of the characters because it took a while to hook. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And I would say that it really set off on the wrong foot with me for Matt because not the first time that we see him, but it's very soon after is when he tries to do that first swim in the lake. Mm -hmm. And it just irritates me. Cole is very much a caretaker. Mm -hmm. And so he cares for Matt in a way, but Matt never seems to care for Cole. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very like one-sided friendship 
that never gets resolved. Mm -hmm. And in the end, there's some redeeming qualities of Matt with the fight. And, and this is not really a big spoiler, but they fight with these other people in the end. And Matt's like, oh, I took up for you because he said something about you. No, you took up for, you, you punched him because you wanted to. Yeah. There was never any give for Matt. It was always take. Yeah. And I, that's why I just did not like Matt as a character. And the book talks about how the friendship, like the back of the book talks about, oh, this is an epic friendship. This is the best relationship I've ever seen in a book. I would disagree. I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. Throughout prob probably the first uh, seven chapters, I forgot who was who. Yeah. Matt and Cole. And I was like, wait, whose father died? Who has diabetes? And so that should not happen. Yeah. If you have a great friendship, you should see each of them individually mm -hmm. and then together. So I really, I really wish, you know, this book would have been given more opportunity yeah. to change. I almost feel like the main character was Matt. Yeah. And Cole was just kind of a secondary background mm -hmm. player because, I mean, we end the book with Matt. Yeah. And he, he ends Cole's story sooner we figure out what happens to him, but then we go with Matt. We go on the journey with Matt to his next chapter. Mm -hmm. We physically leave the town with Matt. With Matt. And so to me, that shows that Matt is the main character. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that it's anything bad. I mean, we say this all the time. What we like about a book may not necessarily be what somebody else likes about a book. And what we dislike about a book may not be what somebody else dislikes. Very true. So I still think that if you have uh, trouble coping with, and you're grieving currently, um, and you have uh, witnessed or lived through a tragedy, I think Every Moment After would be a great book to pick yeah. up. Um, it is slightly inspiring, even though I don't think it means to be inspiring. Mm. I think it's really just this look at these two teenagers' lives and look at where they're going and how different they are. Yeah. Especially if you put, if you go into the book wanting to be inspired, I think you will. Mm -hmm. But if you go into the book kind of blase, blase, I don't think you'll like it. So, um, so I was kind of medium yeah, to it. If I were to rate it, I would probably give it a three star just because it was okay. I finished it. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever return to it. I think the author, I mean, I, it's amazing that he, this is his first book, so it's amazing that he was able to publish this, and HMH is a great publisher, so yeah. this is a wonderful, fantastic book. It just wasn't personally for me. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't personally for me either, even though I found some inspiring bits to it. It still frustrated me more than inspired me. Yeah. There was like one line in there that was really just- Ooh, can I read it? Oh, yeah. I Brit highlighted it for me. Yes, Brittany highlighted this for me because, you know, obviously this book had a lot of topics that I was going through um, in terms of grief, but I want to read this. So basically, I'm going to read a little bit. Um, Cole tells Chris, my favorite character, um, this. And he says, you just have to get through one breath at a time, one moment at a time. So I didn't want to read too much because we don't know what we can and cannot read on here. But yeah. I thought that was a great quote. And thank you for highlighting it. You're welcome. Because it really is helpful. That was the part that like made me tear up. And I was just like, when, when Brad gets to this, because I told <laughs> Brad, don't read this right away. Yeah, yeah. It, I, it, it was, was very fresh. It was very fresh. A lot of real stuff was happening. And I was just like, oh, that's what, where we're yeah. at. <laughs> so when you said you took it on vacation, I was like, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it was inspiring in the right moments. Mm -hmm. But then also frustrating. Yeah. So this book actually came out already. And it came out on April 9th. 2019. Yeah. So it's about, we're about a month behind, but I'm glad we're doing it this month because this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, really? I mm -hmm. didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So I'm really happy that we got to choose a book and read a book about mental health and grief and trauma. And I think that it was a great, you know, addition to our, our collection. Yeah. Sadly, this book will be coming out in June. Our, our book review <laughs> oh. will be coming out in June. We are really late. <laughs> 
We're recording it in May, though. Yes, yes. So, yes. the mental health awareness still stands. Yes. And mental health is always important. So, yes. please see a therapist if you are experiencing grief, trauma, or anything related to mental health. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are important. So, with that said, thank you, HMH, again, for supplying us this copy of an ARC for every moment after. Yes. And thank you, Joseph Moldover, for writing this book and giving people a new perspective on ways to cope with trauma. And if you would like to follow us on our various social medias, we are everywhere. You can find us on Twitter at Audio Shelf Me, Facebook at Audio Shelf, and Instagram at Audio Shelf underscore podcast. We also have a Patreon if you want to help our show grow, but totally not necessary. You watching to this point, if you have, is great enough for us yes thank you and if you've read this book every moment after make sure to comment in the comments below yes if you have a different perspective on it than us we would love to hear your thoughts so until next time bye, bye.